will strike a chord in many hearts. It certainly does for me. I remember being curled under my blanket with the volume of my Game Boy just loud enough so I could hear it and my parents couldn't. This is the sound of Pokemon, a game that shaped many childhoods. It's a story of love and passion, a fear of change, and a franchise that quickly grew to the top of the world. You may have played these games when they came out, or maybe you had a sibling that played it and handed their console down to you. Or maybe you're just curious about the humble beginnings of Pokemon. Well, I'm M. Fuji, and I invite you to relax and enjoy this Pokemon Generation 1 retrospective. In Japan, a young game designer named Satoshi Tajiri had a unique vision, one inspired by his childhood love for bug collecting. As a kid, Satoshi spent his days collecting and researching bugs, earning him the nickname Dr. Bug amongst his friends. It wasn't all fun and games, however. Satoshi watched as the years went on and the once lush lands he grew up in urbanized. This led to him spending more time in arcades and becoming fascinated in the creation of video games. Game Freak, launched in the early 1980s, was a simple fan-made magazine dedicated to these video games that Satoshi fell in love with. It spoke about tips, tricks, and reviews, as well as the general video game culture. Wanting to capture that moment forever and share the joy of being a young bug collector once again, Satoshi's mind went to work on something greater than just Game Freak magazine. After deciding to move into game development, Tajiri and his team, including Ken Sugimori, who became the lead artist for Pokemon, shifted their focus entirely to creating video games. Game Freak became a formal development studio in 1989. That's when they pitched the concept of a capsule monster type game to Nintendo. A game where players could capture, train, and battle creatures. It was a concept that had never been done before. And Nintendo saw the potential. Nintendo knew it had to be developed for the Game Boy, a handheld console that was already making waves in the gaming world. However, working with the constraints of the Game Boy's limited hardware posed significant challenges. Pokemon Red and Green were released in Japan on February 27, 1996. This game spread by word of mouth, and it was like wildfire. Players became captivated by the idea of trading and battling with friends. The success in Japan set the stage for a global phenomenon. Pokemon Red and Blue were eventually released in North America in September 1998. Europe followed in 1999. The games were a massive hit, selling millions of copies, turning Pokemon into a household name. Nintendo and Game Freak coordinated a marketing campaign that was incredible. They released a Pokemon anime, trading cards, toys, plushies, everything you could think of at that time, Pokemon was on it. And at this point, Pokemon wasn't just a video game. It was a multimedia empire, and it found its way into the hearts of many who played it. Pokemon Generation 1's core mechanics were simple yet addictive. Pokemon is a turn-based RPG where you, the player, become a Pokemon trainer. Though many people try, a lot of people who played this game have never beat the game the way it was intended. Beating the game meant you had to collect all 8 badges from the different gyms, defeat the Elite 4 to become the Pokemon Champion, and yes, collect all 151 Pokemon. The enjoyment of the game came from you, the player, deciding when you've had enough. Maybe you just wanted to beat the gyms, or maybe you were only interested in the collection aspect of the game. Either way, it was your game and you could play it the way you saw fit. Battles acted as one of the cornerstones of the gameplay. Each player is allowed a maximum party of six Pokemon. Each of these Pokemon have four set moves they can use in a combat. All of these moves are based off of different types like water, fire, electric, and certain types are strong against certain Pokemon. For example, water type moves are strong against fire type Pokemon. Though you can collect more than six Pokemon, you can only walk around with six at a time. 
This type-based strategy adds a layer of depth to these battles, encouraging players to think tactically about their team composition and move choices. Pokemon can also level up and evolve into more powerful forms, further enhancing their abilities and adding a sense of progression. My favorite part of the game was the collection aspect, where you would journey throughout the Kanto region, talking to people, trading, finding wild Pokemon. There was just such a big sense of accomplishment when you collected all 150 Pokemon. Parts of Kanto were inaccessible until the players got these hidden machines. These are specific moves that can be used outside of battle, for example, allowing you to surf along the shoreline or cut through annoying bushes blocking your way. These puzzles made exploring Kanto feel like a real adventure, and throughout your journey you could catch Pokemon by throwing Pokeballs. Great Balls, Ultra Balls, and even the Master Ball. Each ball has their own set of usage, and this forces the player to think about which ball to use and when. Sometimes, you might find yourself battling a feisty Pokemon and need a stronger ball to capture it. Having a wide variety of Pokemon to choose and train makes it difficult to experience the same gameplay twice. This lends itself to the freedom that you feel while completing a new playthrough. I wouldn't be able to talk about Pokemon without talking about its exclusives. That's right, if you had Pokemon Red, there were certain Pokemon that only you could get, making your game one of a kind. But that also meant that you couldn't complete your Pokedex without playing with somebody who owns Pokemon Blue. This encouraged players to trade with their friends to complete their Pokedex. You would use your link cable to connect your two Game Boys and complete your collection. The link cable also allowed you to battle your strongest Pokemon against your friends, adding yet another layer of strategy and socialization to the game. The storyline of Pokemon Generation 1 is deceptively simple, yet deeply engaging. In the fictional Kanto region, the narrative follows the journey of you, a Pokemon trainer on their quest to become the Pokemon Champion. You start in a small town, and after receiving your first Pokemon, and your first lesson on how to play and use a Pokemon, you get thrust into a world with wild Pokemon everywhere. Your goal is to defeat the eight gym leaders and collect their badges to gain entry to the Elite Four. These gyms are categorized by Pokemon types and level strength. These are tests to prepare you and to grow your battling skills. And along the way, you must foil the plans of Evil Team Rocket, an organization that exploits Pokemon led by Giovanni, the eighth gym leader. After collecting all eight badges, you can enter the Poke League, where you must face the Elite Four, four of the strongest trainers in the region. Each battle is a test of endurance, strategy, and skill, pushing you to the limit of your abilities. And just when you think you've emerged victorious, your rival steps forward as the final challenge. Having already claimed the title of champion, this climactic battle is the culmination of all your rivalry, your training, your entire journey, making your eventual victory all the more satisfying. I'm M. Fuji, and this year, I have played Pokemon Red, Green, a fake green version, blue, and yellow to completion. Even though I wasn't alive when these games were released, there's something magical about going to this world. I would definitely suggest returning to the original games if you're interested in playing them. However, there are remakes that you could play in the newer generations, so that way all the Pokemon that you do collect in your Pokédex can travel forward with you. Pokemon Generation 1 has Pokemon Red, Yellow, and Blue here in North America. However, if you have a Game Boy Advanced, there is Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, which were released in 2004. These were the ones that I grew up with. They have some quality of life changes that make it easier and more enjoyable to play, but I still suggest playing the Game Boy Color ones at least once. And if you're a Switch player, you can get Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee, a reimagination of the original games with updated graphics and a new way to interact with the Kanto region. Pokemon collected in these games can be transferred to your Pokemon Home app and then moved between newer Pokemon games. Our Pokemon Sword and Shield, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, Arceus, and Scarlet and Violet. So once again, I'm M. Fuji, and I hope you either join or return to the world of Pokemon, because it truly is something special. Subscribe for more video game content, and I'll catch you on the next one.